So you've decided that you want to get better at Age of Empires 4. You've got your build order down, you're surviving the early game, and now you find yourself in a position where you and your opponent are more or less even. But then it hits you. What do I do next? In this beginner guide, I'll give you some tips to improve your mid-game. This guide is by no means a be-all end-all that will ensure you wins. Age of Empires is a game of decisions. You need to invest time to gain the necessary experience to make correct decisions. However, there are a couple of fundamentals that will dramatically increase your win rate and this guide hopes to get you started faster. Think of this guide as compared to basketball, learning how to dribble. I consider myself an average player, however I've played numerous games to have a worthwhile experience to share with others trying to improve so that hopefully, you learn this faster than I did. As early as possible, get in the habit of collecting relics. Relics are valuable because they provide unlimited and unharassable source of gold provided your monastery still stand. Each relic grants you 100 gold per minute and that could be the difference on whether or not you can afford the unit you currently need. You can use shift commands to minimize APM needed to manage gathering relics. If you're having trouble keeping track of your monks, there's a setting called cycle through religious units. I personally bind it to mouse 5 and it has made managing monks way easier. If you want to improve your relic gathering game, HRE, Delhi, and Roost provide an easier transition to that objective. HRE and Delhi can produce monks at feudal age, enabling you to position them for collection while aging up. Roost has access to the Abbey of the Trinity, giving you the mobile warrior monk. Much like relics, capturing sacred sites provide 100 gold per minute along with pressuring your opponent to respond. If you find yourselves having trouble beating a turtle, then Sacred Sites are a good option in making your opponent come out from their base and fight you in your turf. If you want to improve your Sacred Site gameplay, the Delhi Sultanate is the Civ most attuned to capturing Sacred Sites. Their unique mechanic, Sanctity, once researched, allows you to capture Sacred Sites in the Feudal Age, while others have to wait till Castle Age to capture Sites. Their infantry can also build walls around the site, enabling you to defend them easier. Once Sites are controlled, you can split workers between food and wood, making your eco more efficient. Should I take relics or sacred sites first? With most civs barring Delhi, you want to collect relics first before securing sacred sites. Relics once banked cannot be easily contested by an opponent, the reason being your monastery is usually deep inside your base. Sacred sites on the other hand are spread out throughout the map and can be taken back provided your enemy invests in enough military and APM. TLDR, relics are the cake, sites are the cherry on top. Age of Empires is a game of decisions. In order to make smart decisions, you need information. The best way to gain that is through vision. There are three main ways to secure vision. Scouts, towers, and keeps. Scouting is probably the biggest difference maker when climbing the ladder. Forgetting that your scout actually exists when you're under pressure is a common mistake among players. Either you forget it exists, or you let it die. Now how many of us here are guilty of not replacing their scout if it's lost in the early game? I sure know I am. If you have a stable and you have food to spare, Investing in a scout to replace the one you lost is always a good option. If you don't plan on building a stable, then take extra care in handling your starting scout. In terms of vision, scouts are the most flexible form you can find because you can maneuver them at any point in the map. If you want to get better at scout management, the Rus have an easier time massing scouts because they have access to the hunting cabin. Hunting cabins act as a mill that can produce scouts while other civs have to build them from the town center or stables. Give Rus a try to train your scout management. Towers are cheap defensive structures. They build relatively quickly and can be upgraded with emplacements to further ward off an area. They secure intel on a large portion of the map and deters opponents from raiding when enough of them gain emplacements. You want to get the maximum value from your towers. As a basic principle, place them along paths most likely your opponent will cross to get to your eco. This will give you ample time to react to raids and minimize damage and provide garrison locations to safeguard your villagers. On the other hand, you can also pre-place them on resource locations where you think your opponent will move next. This will get you intel on where you can deal more damage with your own raids. Lastly, whenever you can, consider the high ground when placing towers as they give you extra vision. The Mongols, the Rus, and the English are civs that have unique mechanics tied to their towers. Mongol towers grant movement speed to units under its influence. English towers grant attack speed to units around its influence, given they detect enemies nearby. Roost towers are tankier and more expensive than Norma towers. They also boost wood production from lumber camps in their influence. Keeps are basically stronger towers. They do more damage, provide greater vision, and cost stone to build. 
Everything discussed in the previous section applies here. However, you want to be more mindful where you place them because they are expensive to repair. Every naturally occurring food resource in the map is limited. Farms cost a significant investment of wood. Be wary of the time you have to transition into farms, as this timing can be exploited by your opponent to deal damage. Don't overthink it though, just be aware that at this point you are weak and perhaps a more conservative approach to engagements should be taken until you have enough farms. Raiding is one of the best offensive tools you can have, especially in the mid game before most of the map is walled. If your opponent doesn't react, an unchecked raid can potentially win you the game via an eco deficit. Personally, I think the main use of raids is not to directly win you the game, but that they buy you space, because your opponent will have to react to it to prevent damage. You can then use that space to go after other objectives that were previously discussed, like relics, sacred sites, or even building a tower in the midfield to secure vision. Therefore, a good raid is one that is layered with another objective. Here's a training tip you can do to practice layering. Relic collection is a very good pair to raiding. Try this on the AI first, and then when you're confident enough, do it live. Right when you reach Castle Age, build a monastery instantly, and then produce a monk. While waiting for your monk, get two or three cavalry units, which can be horsemen or knights. Shift click your monk to gather the relic, and then shift click it back to your monastery. After you're done issuing shift commands, focus on your raid. Micro your cavalry and be as annoying as possible. The goal is to get the relic. Keep your cavalry alive as long as possible. This may seem mechanically daunting at first, but I promise you with enough practice and putting the effort in remembering that you need to pair your raid with something else, this will become second nature. The first important step is to remember. Once you get to a point where you can remember easily, you can now focus your attention on being more efficient with your micro. Alright, time to wrap up. This guide aims to give you options to improve your mid game. When you don't know what to do, Securing relics, capturing sacred sites, and establishing vision are good objectives you can pursue. You then use raiding to give you space to attain these objectives. The beauty of Age of Empires is your opponent is trying to do the exact same thing, but maybe in a different order, or maybe his strategy is more focused in preventing you from achieving set goals. Playing the game more will definitely give you a better grasp on how to adapt and go beyond your limits. If you made it this far into the video, thank you very much. I hope you learned something from this guide, and I'll see you in the next one. Or if you got the time, I stream on Twitch. Come and hang if you got the time. And watch me miss all the tips that I probably gave you in this video. Alright, have a good one guys.